All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your host, Kevin Alex Bent. This program right here, we're talking about Entrepreneur's Talk Show, where we interview different entrepreneurs from all over the world. Now, tonight, we have a special guest with us. We have Judith Wilson. This is a fantastic show, a show where we're going to meet an entrepreneur that is doing remarkable work in the society. So right now, I'm going to introduce you to um, Judith. Judith, how are you doing tonight? I'm blessed, love. How are you? I'm doing better than most. Um, oh. it's, it's fantastic to see you on the show tonight. Oh, you too. I'm so nervous. <laughs> I'm sweating bullets. There's no need to be nervous, man. There's no need to be nervous. <laughs> on the show right here, we do things very much natural and to the point. Now, with everybody on the show, they know how we do it here at Earth World Trade um, Entrepreneurs Talk Show. On this talk show, we um, ask you 13 questions. And these 13 questions is to actually get the audience and the wider public to get to know who you are and what you're about. So we're going to be asking these 13 questions um, of you. And then you will answer the questions as best as possible as you can. And then we'll be going into a segment where we give you the opportunity, a 13 minutes opportunity, so you can actually tell the public about yourself. And then thereafter, um, I will go ahead and tell the public, why did I start Earth World Trade? Why did I start Earth World Trade Academy? And why did I start Earth World Trade Entrepreneurs Talk Show? So Judith, let's get the show on the road. We're not wasting no time. I know that you have a lot to say. Um, and I'm so proud of you right now to just be on the show. Um, but let's get the show on the road and let the public get to know who you are. Here we go. So, Here we go. You know, 13 questions go. The first question for the record is, my lady, um, what is your name? My name is Judith Wilson. Right. So where are you from? Miss um, Miss Wilson. I was born in Kingston, Jamaica, and I'm living in the United States. Kingston, Jamaica. Ohio. Yes, in Tower Hill. Tower Hill. So we're talking about Tower Hill. We're talking about somewhere around Kingston 13, run by Waterhouse there. Yes. Okay. Bottom so you're side. bottom side. Bottom yes. side. You're saying. Yeah. So yeah. you're currently living in the United States currently right now. Yes. All right. Okay. So please tell me, what is the name of your business? Well, my business is um, Heavy Load, and it is through Empress Eye Creation. And um, I empower um, people who've been through the traumas of sexual abuse. So right. um, that is, yeah, so that is my business. To fight for right. the youths. To fight for the youth. Well, we're going to touch yeah. base on the topic of sexual abuse very much so in this um, program, as you are also a victim of that as well. And we're going to be touching base on that. Yes. But we're just going to run through the 13 questions before we really jump into all of that good stuff. Um, so you're from Toil, you're from Kingston yes. 13, a born Jamaican yes. that is living in the United States of America currently. Mm -hmm. Right. So tell yes. me, what made you start your own business? This particular business is there. This business in itself that you're talking about. Why did you start it? Um, as a child growing up, I realized that um, we don't have a voice, you know, and so um, it's to help people to find their voice. That's why I started it. Right, to so help people to try to find their voice. Yes. That's powerful stuff right there. So you're actually speaking for the voiceless. Yes. Like for young women them, that are being sexually abused and so on. And men, and men. We can't forget the men. And the men. You know, um, mm. yes. Mm. That's what you're saying. So th tell me something. I want to ask you some more about your schooling now, right? Tell me some more about your formal schooling, please. Well, my formal schooling, um, I did excellent in school, but um, I was taken out of school before I went to the eighth grade. 
And when I um, was partially deported to Jamaica and I came back and I was pregnant with my second son, uh, for me, education is really important. So I'm a bona spliff and go pass my test and um, I have my GED, right. you know, and um, yeah. So talk to me more. I would like to further talk to some mm -hmm. more. Talk to me some more about your, your GED. Talk to me some more about which primary school I went to. If you went to any well, college. I went to, um, I went to um, Harden Junior High School in Frankfurt, in Philadelphia. And right. um, I, re I recently put in for um, a criminal justice course. You know, um, I, I like law and um, yeah, man, you know, look, look at the camera. I want, I want to see your eyes, and I know that the public wants to see your eyes. I'm, I'm teaching you on the program. I see. Tell me some I, more about I, you. I, I want to study law. law. Pardon me? You want to study law? Yeah, um, criminal justice. Mm -hmm. um, living here in America, I see where our natural sovereign rights is always um, infringed upon, you know, and um, people really need to study that so that they, they're they not um, being abused by the people who's supposed to be protecting us. Right. So what I'm asking you know is that, so which one of the institution itself that you went to, that you got the GED from? Um, I got that from a school, um, Benjamin Franklin High School in Philadelphia. Right. So did you went in any school in Jamaica here? Tell us um, some more I don't have, I, I remember I went to a school, uh, a, a tree mile. I know there was a bank right there and then there was a school around the corner. I don't remember the name of it. It's been so long. All right. That's, that's fine. No, all right. Let's move on to the next question right now. Um, mm -hmm. tell me about some of your experiences while being at those schools and those institutions. What was it like? Um, I had a, I had a good time at school because, um, I was quite studious. I love to learn. Um, but going through the things that I was going through, it was not so good for everybody else. <laughs> and, and I, I don't want to cut you. I want to. I want you to tell the audience what kind of things you're talking about. Be specific. Uh, my 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 sexual abuse as a child um, right. messed up a lot of my education in school because, like, um, I would think um, that um, other kids could tell that I was raped the night before or that I was beaten and put in the closet to sleep, and, or... And so, and, well, let me do this. So this, this here now, as it relates to that, was it this school that we're talking about in Jamaica, or we're talking about in United States? No, um, this is the United States. Okay. Um, and my, my school days in Jamaica was quite fun. Um, Did you tell anybody? That was one of the most beautiful... Did you tell in anybody? America, yes. Yes, I had a friend that um, I became close to and she knew, but um, she was going through the same things too. So. I see. So with that being happening and so on, you find comfort in a next friend that was having the same problem. So both of you were going through the same trauma. Yes. All yes. right. Thank you so much for sharing that. All right, give me a give me a minute, give me a minute, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host tonight. I am Kevin Alex Ben. Tonight we have a powerful story. We have a story here of a, a grown woman, actually, um, forty eight of age, if I stand correctly. And the fact is, yes. we have Judith Wilson on the program with us tonight. She is an upcoming upcoming artist to release songs. And also upcoming author working on a book, um, The Voice of the Voiceless. Let's get back into the show. So, Judith, so that being happening there at school and so on, 
And this is happening here in the United States of America. So I want to ask you the question now. Right? Now, what do you think about formal schooling education? What do you think about the education system in America and in Jamaica, if you can recall? Um, I think education is important, you know, but um, on, on a real, um, the education system needs to teach youths the, um, the um, money etiquette, you know, how to manage money. The money etiquette. Money etiquette, yes. Right. Um, we, we, we're not taught that. You know, we, we're not taught the value of money. Yeah, you get money and you spend it and, you know, but because you have bills and certain things and that's what money is for, is to spend to take care of you. But, right. um, you know, there is money management and certain things that they don't teach in school. Right. You know, and um, I think that that's necessary. I right. think that we should really start to implement that. Um, or you, you can't, you, you could go to school to learn certain things that they teach you, but certain things is just naturally within you, you know, right. that you're born with. Like you can't, you can't be taught a gift in school. Right. You know what I mean? I want to ask yeah. you a question now. Thank you for that statement. I want to ask you a question. If you could do it all over again, right? Knowing what you're knowing right now, right? Mm -hmm. Would you do anything differently? What would you do differently if you could? Um, I, I don't think I would do anything differently. You know, I would just hope that I had um, a family that loved me, mm. you know? So talk um, to me now. Hold on a second. When a family I love you. That is a big yeah. statement. So what happened to your mother and what happened to your father? Tell us. What happened then? Uh, well, um, when we came to the United States, my parents separated. So my mother stayed in Jamaica and my father came here. Right. But I, I, within myself and watching other people within the family and their family come together as a unit, I felt right. that that was part of the separation. So once the family got me and my sib my sister here, um, it's pretty much like they denounced my mother. You know, they just, she was just thrown to the side. So um, I, I grew up um, but your parents hurt behind that. Were your parents married? Yes, they were. They were married? Yeah. And then yes. your father lived to the United States yes. and your, your mother stayed behind? Yes. Right. So when you guys reached to the United States of America now, where did you guys reside? Where did you guys stay? Um, we went to Philadelphia. And um, that's where most of my little 10... 10 to teenagers years was right so tell us when you went to philadelphia how did the sexual abuse started what relative did you was amongst at that time mm -hmm. you found out that um atrocity on you i don't know how it started i don't even know why it started like oh my god i thought i was the ugliest thing in the world i mean i get teased every day all my yellow and you know i'm just so I met all them freckles in my face and so I, I, I don't know, like, I don't know why he would do that. Um, but it started shortly after, like, four months after we came. That's when it started. And then it took me two months to tell my grandmother. Right. I'm like, well, if you touch me again. Tell us now. You're a grown man. So you, can't, so you feel comfortable now. So tell us. Who is the man that did that to you after your telegram mother? Who did it to you? Her Hello. son, my father. My father. You know. So your father um, sexual abuse you. Yeah, you're saying? Yes. Yes. What you're yes. saying, man. Yes. And un un unfortunately, you know, I, I am glad that it happened to me 
because right. um, as I, I wrote a song, you know, I used to talk about, oh, God, why me? Why me? And then one day just coming on my head like, why not you, Judith? Look what I'm doing to Jesus. It's like, I know you wasn't going to take that. You was going to stand up against it. You understand me? And that's exactly what I did. I stood up against it. I went to my grandmother and I told her exactly what happened. And then I got a slap across my face. All right, so hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on a second. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this is your host, Kevin Alex Ben, bringing in you a, a show of an entrepreneur that is doing remarkable well in her own right. An entrepreneur that been to a great ordeal, a woman that bears 10 children, um, 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 mother, 10 children currently, um, and I want to tell you, her story is remarkable in the sense that here is her mother and father being separated. She moved to Philadelphia from Jamaica, reached a foreign. And when she reached a foreign, now her father started to have sex with her and all these things. And then she started to feel ugly and all these things. Went to school, found her next um, colleague, peers amongst herself, and I was facing the same problem. So let's get back right into the show. Tell us now. Because the audience want to know, and I want to know, even Ian Boyd in his grave, RIP, Mr. Ian Boyd would love this program, right? I want to hear more, man. Come on, tell us. What would you like to know? I want to know. So, you are the first one that he did that to, uh, that you know? No, no, no. Now, right. I thought, I thought so. So, right. um... During times, I there, there was this one time, me keep seeing this person uh, message me. So um, I have this sticking on my house that I painted purple because my other auntie was dead named Claire and she loved the color purple. And that's what I'm right. buried her in. So, so that day, me, me I look upon the stick and was thinking about my auntie Claire and my spirit was like, well, well, call the, you know, friend the person. So when my friend the person, it happened to be my cousin. So my spirit was like, just ask her, just ask her. So I ask her. So it come to find out it was just not me. Um, it didn't start with me because oftentimes abusers, um, it, it, it don't just start with one person. They, they've been doing this. You know, well, they just don't get me. You it. find out that if there was an NX incident. Yes, there is more. There is more. There is more Tell people and it angers me. It angers me. There, there is many more. So if there was one, two, three, four, five that I know, there is many more. And this stuff has to stop. You know, people need to really allow children to grow. I understand. Really. I understand. But I want to ask the question. Did you know of anybody else that was, that was abused by your father himself? Um, later on in life, yes. Okay. Yes. Who were those persons? Um, well, I can't give names, right? Right, but I right. can say that they're family members also. They're family know? members also. And it's, no, but it's no, but like free, free family, no, you know. They can't do anything. No, you know? no, I, I, I can't d divulge names, but I can right. say that it's his family members, and it stems in 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 both countries, in Jamaica and here. Yeah. So the things right. that he was doing in Jamaica, he brought here. And then what make it so bad is that the people who were supposed to protect us did not protect us and that they turn around and also victimize us. You know, and, and this is a big thing for our children who come, uh, you, you know, is going through the, the traumas of sexual abuse is that we already have this thing on us. We already is carrying this person's shame. I'm so happy I was able to give it back. I'm like, y'all, eh, eh, take this on a mind. <laughs> you know, right. um, this is not what I want for my life. Like, what is you doing? Like, wh wh why is all of y'all here and nobody's doing anything? And when right. I said that, I really wish that somebody loved me. It, it was many adults in that house and no one did anything for us. So no let me one. ask you a question. When you say for us, who are you saying in for us in terms of who? Um, for for um, for us, for me and for the us. other person that 
Yeah, for me and the um, for me and the other person, or I don't know how it was when he molested people in Jamaica. I don't know if they said anything. I I know my co cousin didn't, so I'm sure you know. But I right. know here I said something. I can so only speak for you. Know, your grandmother mm -hmm. there you now in the United States at that particular time was your grandmother mm -hmm. by your mother's side or your grandmother by your father's side? No, that was her son. You know, oh, and being a mom, <laughs> being a mom now, I can understand, you know, like how dare you, but, but not even that, just my grandmother, right? I, I love her and God rest her soul and being a mom and going through certain things in life. Right. I could kind of understand it, you know, mm -hmm. this big shock, like how dare you come tell me that my child is a monster, you know? But even after that shock, she never came to me and embraced me and hold me and protect me. What she did do though, was um, tell people that in the family that I'm a liar and I'm not to be believed. You know, and then all the kids in the house were pitted together. So it was like this big thing where um, you and I and somebody else and everybody's watching everybody and telling on everybody. But nobody is telling about the hurt and the pain going on in the house because that's the big secret. And Judy run our mouth too much and Judy chat too much and I tell the secret. So we have to keep Judy away from people, right? And keep her isolated. So then I went through that period of um, intentional isolation, you know, which was horrible as a child. You know, um, I couldn't play with my sister, um, my cousins, you know, I couldn't play with anyone. Like even going to school, I had to go to school and come home and I love sports, you know, um, it, 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 it was horrible. It was really horrible and, and, and um, you know, I'm not happy that this thing happened to me, but again, I thank God that it was me, and um, I was a I was able, as my daughter Kayana said to me, and she said, "Mommy, you're a hero," and I said, "Why you say that, honey?" She said, "Mommy, you rescued all your cousins from being hurt by your dad," you know, and I cried because like I may have rescued them but their parents wasn't there for me, you know? And it, it's, it, it, it was just like, really, ah. to this day, I still have anger towards that, you right. know? Not an aunt came to my aid, not an uncle. So um, I would really like to go to law school at 48. I'm gonna go to criminal justice school and I'm going to study because I'm going to find a way to bring justice for myself, right, and other people, other youth. Right. I seen what they Focus did with um. Hmm? Focus, Timmy. Hold on. Get your thoughts together. Hold on a second, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host tonight. I am Kevin Alex Ben. Many of you have um, been watching this program. You know what this program is all about. We interview the best of the best. Some of the entrepreneurs that are doing remarkable work by themselves, for themselves, along with teams as well. But we look for the strong ones and we'll find them. No matter where they are, this is the place to be on this program. Earth World Trade Entrepreneurs Talk Show. Tonight, we have a special guest with us, Judith Wilson, a born Jamaican, um, age 48 now, a mother of 10, um, upcoming artist, having... Um, been through a whole lot as you can hear and we're going back in with the furthermore with the questions that we have the 13 questions I'm about to wrap up that segment but we're gonna ask a few more questions to us hear what she has to say and then we'll move on to the next segment judith let's get the show on the road let's go again so that's some powerful story right there but i want to ask you a question judith what would you want your future kids and generation and kids currently to remember you for what would you want your generation to remember you for your legacy what would you want them to remember you for i want my children to remember me like dad my my mother 
My mother eat lightning and defecate thunder. My mother <laughs> strong. My mother don't make nobody stop her with nothing. My mother just keep going on. Like, I never give up. I never let go. I never give in. I don't surrender. I don't know what it is to quit. You're going to have to kill me. And when you kill me dead, you better make sure somebody dead come and up your comeback. You dump your comeback. So, well, I, where's the start line again for the record? Where's the eat, eat what, lightning and death get what thunder? Me eat so lightning like, and defecate thunder. I keep them, I leave them wondering. How oh, come Empress just keep smiling? You understand me? So, um, you know, that's that joy in my heart. Because I'm a child of the most Ija, And, you know, he brought me through all the trials and tribulation that I've been through. Whereas though I can sit right here and talk to you, you know, and um, be proud of me. Because, like, I didn't do anything. I'm just, I am a victim. And you know what? Maybe my dad was a victim, too. I mean, my dad is 73 years old now. Um, but he's still alive. Your father is yes. still alive. Yeah, I'm alone my daddy. So where you, you know, where, I, where does your dad live now? He still live in Philadelphia. Um, he lives in Philadelphia, and um, he's old and life isn't so kind to him, you know. Um, right. Is he living with a relative? You know, if he's married again, do you know if he's in a, a home or something? No, like that? Right. no, he's not married. He's not married, you know. But life hasn't been kind to him, you know. You can't hurt youths and and um think that the universe don't protect us right the universe protects us so right they still alive yes still alive. no but you him not have no money like like you him not have no money like like bill cosby you know them not do nothing to him when you're poor when you're poor you're not getting no help you understand me and that is wrong that is wrong right. All life, it's not just black lives matter. All lives matter. And when somebody wrong you, you understand me? It don't matter all long, especially with children, because you know what children, it takes so, you have people who will go to the grave who were sexually abused and never speak of it, you know? Right. And then this is something that ticked me off. You have mothers right. who know say, the man with them there with and molest them pick me and stay with that man because that man is providing for them. You understand me? So you would sacrifice your child to be with this man. Like you can't get off your behind and go get a job for yourself and do for yourself. The with you then? Is that the situation with you with your mother? Is that the situation with you with your mother? No, that wasn't the situation with I love. Um, my mother was um, in Jamaica and we were here with my father's family right so um but, um, but what, type of work your mom did? what kind of profession your mom did tell us some more about your mother my mom my mom was a housemaker <laughs> she was a housewife <clears throat> you know I, right. i've never seen my mom work my dad didn't want my mom to work he just wanted her to care for us and that's what so she did. did. So you told your grandmother about the sexual abuse, which is your father, mother. And, and she yes. boxed you across the face, slapped you in the face, right? Mm, I guess. So when, mm -hmm. when did you tell your mother now? Did you tell your own mother? And what did your own mother yes. do? My mother cried. My mother cried and um, it was very sad. Right. And, and she, she said, she said something that made me angry on the inside because she said that me know him did I grow your fame self you know and I I got really angry with her you what know you say? So your mother your own birth mother said that to you your biological mother yes. said that to you so I tell yes, your mother that my your father was having sex with you your mother yes. tell you that she knew that your father was growing you are molding you are coaching you yes. are grooming you for himself. Yes. Yes. And I said, well, mom, why, why, why didn't you do nothing? You know, like, why, why, why didn't you, why didn't you, why did you let us go to America with home? You know, because right. like, even, even in that, I never got to say goodbye to my mom. I never got to say goodbye to my brothers or my sister. Um, before we left Jamaica, I believe we went to our aunt's house and right. we left from the aunt's house and then we was on the airplane. So 
I I didn't even know we was coming to America. We didn't know until we was at the airport. <laughs> so it's kind of like a kidnapping. <laughs> I felt like it was a kidnapping. <laughs> Like, I don't want to be away from, and then you bring me here and do all these things. Like, I was on the streets at 12 years old. Like, I, like, really had to sleep in the car, yo. Like, <laughs> that was just, it was just wild. But um, I, I'm glad I went through the experiences that I have because it has allowed me to be groomed into this woman of substance that I am. You know? Fascinating story. Yeah. But I want to ask you the question today. I That's hear right. what you're in, in hearing that. I hear what mm-hmm. your grandma did in hearing that. Mm-hmm. And John Jigan, may the Lord rest his soul. But what did you ever tell the police or tell your school teacher? What well, um, when, when, when I told my grandmother, right, you know, and then I went through all of the things that I went through, right. I didn't even want to tell anybody else because if she slapped me, that means she didn't believe me. Right. So going through what I was going through with him and then going to her, my only help that I thought, you know, it was like, okay, well, she just hit me. What am I supposed to do? I just laid down and cried, you know, and then um, I thought about telling the cops um, that was a little later on. But then um, what happened when I was gonna, when I told him I was gonna tell the cops if he touched my sister, was that the year before my eighth grade year, um, I was locked in a room. He was seeing this woman, um, Joy, God rest her soul, and um, they locked me in a room for a whole week. And um, at the end of it. Um, I was woken up very early in the morning to be taken to the airport to go back to Jamaica. And he sent me there with my green card, so I was able to come back. (laughs) So you're talking about being uh, partially deported. That's what you're talking about, that you're in... It, it yeah, because like he, he sent me to Jamaica with $200 and never even sent another dime. You know, Scala, big up. You know, Scala Bantam, you know, God bless you because you was like really dear for me. You were such an angel because he helped me to come back to America. Who's, who's Scala? Tell us about Scala. Who's Scala? Oh, uh, Scala. Scala was this man that I met in Jamaica and, um, he was way older than I was, and there, there it goes. You know, the, the, the. Hey, well, I was already having sex. Like, hey, so why not? You know, my the my self worth. You know, not saying that he wasn't a good man because he really was a good man, but my self worth was so low that, I mean, I was just doing whatever the hell I want. <laughs> That's what but, I'm saying. Um, yeah, self-esteem was very low, and you know I didn't think anything so did great about children, myself. Yeah, the children with Skello. Skello, did I get it right? No, he, oh no, no, he wanted. He was trying his best. He was trying his best, but that wasn't that wasn't in the cards. That's not what God wanted for me. You know, God just placed him in my life to help me to get back, so I could fulfill the rest of my destiny. So, so Scala helped you got back to the United States. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. What and I'm saying? forever grateful. I am forever grateful to the, for that. Yeah, and I'll never ever. Children. How did the kids them come into play now? So you went back to Jamaica. Um, you met uh-huh. this guy, an older man by the name of Scala. Did I get it right? Scala. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My correction. Yeah. Scala. And um, mm-hmm. he assisted you and you went back to the United States. How long was after that you went back to the United States of America? Um, I stayed in Jamaica for 11 months. If I was there for the whole year, I would have forfeited my green card. Or I right. would have had to pay a, a re-entry, you know. So right. I'm just really fortunate that God always placed angels around me. Right. So it don't matter 
you know, what it is that I'm going through, those trials and tribulation is just stepping stone for the greatness that is within me wow. that is coming forth. So you know so you went back to the United States now. Um yeah. did you go back to Philadelphia when you came back to the United States the second time? Um, yeah, when I when I came back, I called the house and I'm like, well, I'm at the airport. And my grandmother is like, me don't want the devil on my house. So I hang up. So I was like, da, 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 da. <laughs> I was cursing her out, but she wasn't on the other line, right? right. So I'm sitting in the airport and I'm crying. And right. then this this um this cabman, Mr. Moody, you know, yeah. there goes another angel for me. So he came and, um, you know, I'm crying and he asked what was going on. So I told him what was happening and he allowed me to come to his house with his daughter and his granddaughter. So I started taking care of his granddaughter, just wanting to be in school myself so bad, you know, because like all the kids is going to school and I, I just felt you know, like I'm missing out on so much, even though I read every day. I'm an avid reader. I love to read, you know. Um, so when, when but you came back to the United States now, you, mm -hmm. you moved with this gentleman that is a total stranger, a cab driver. Saw you at the totally. airport. You don't have anywhere to go. He take you in, set you mm -hmm. amongst his daughter and niece, if I'm correct. His, grand, his granddaughter. Yeah. Right. And then you got involved. So how did you enter into a school? Did you register into a school in the United States? How did you well, get he, into he tried he tried to enter me in school, but he couldn't enter me in school because he needed certain um paperwork which right. my family didn't want to provide because as they said, um I'm supposed to be in Jamaica. So right. so tell me about your yeah. children now. You have ten children. What is the what is the eldest of your children? What is all my oldest, my yeah. oldest son is 30. 30, right? Yes. Yes. And the youngest is what? He's 13. And, and the youngest is 13. Yes. Right? And you have 10 yes. children, and you said to me earlier before the show that one died. Yes, a drunk driver killed my second son. Mm, where, what age was he? He was 17. Oh, wow. So how many girls, how many boys out of the 10? Oh, I'm a true dime piece, baby. Two nickels make a dime, five and five. So you have five girls and five boys. Yes. Oh, that's a beautiful story right there, Judith. I got to tell you. <laughs> so <laughs> it's amazing. Do you have any grandkids at the moment? Yes, I do. I have 10. I have five and five also. So you have ten, 10 kids and 10 grandkids currently? Yes, and five granddaughters and five grandsons. Boy, hold on a second. I, I got to say this. Ladies and gentlemen, right now you're tuning to Entrepreneur's Talk Show. We're talking to Judith Wilson, a born Jamaican that migrated to United States of America. Have 10 beautiful children. One passed away. Have nine currently. An upcoming artist with two singles, also an upcoming author of a book, um, The Voice of the Voiceless. And we're talking about the sexual abuse um, that she had with her father, which is around 73 years of age right now, that lives in Philadelphia and currently still alive. Your mother is deceased, our mother is deceased right now, and auntie and so on. But the fact is, the, the story is coming to bump, as Jamaica would say. The Jamaicans would say, story is coming to bump. Now, it, it's out there. Her music is doing fam fantastic well in Africa and elsewhere. And we're going to touch base on that, but we want to hear her story. We want to have an understanding of who the individual is. And the fact is, this is the reason why we ask these 13 questions so the audience, the public, the wider world can know that, hey, this author, this musician right here, this mother, this is her story, no matter how it look, but I saw it in God. And this is where she at right now in her life. And she's on Entrepreneur's Talk Show right now. And she's going a little bit further into her life story. So let's get the show on the road. I want to ask you a question. So do you have any 
regrets. Judy. Um, do I have any regrets? I honestly can't say that I do. You have no regrets? No. What 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 wasn't done was not to be done. It wasn't a part of my story. So I can't regret I something I didn't do or I didn't try to do. It wasn't supposed to be, you know, so. I see. Um, yeah. So I'm going to ask you about two more questions. Do you love currently what you're doing? Do you have a day yes, job currently? Um, no. Um, I'm home with my son doing school and I do my cooking out the house and, you know, um, I could crack your back, you know, do my little massages and stuff like that. So it's a job. I just don't have it over the books, you know. I understand. Yeah. I understand. So the fact is, I want to ask you right now what it is, what it is for you. Mm -hmm. How would you explain what it means to be an entrepreneur for you? What is the definition of you? What does it take to be an entrepreneur? It takes intentional dedication to be an entrepreneur. You know, just said by the sweat of a man, bro, he shall eat bread. So, you know, you have people that sweep floor, you know, you have people that clean toilet. No matter what your parents ask you in the house to do, you know, just do it to the best of your abilities and give you 100% because everything that you learn how to do, you can make money out of. But anything right. you can think of, you can make money. People are sweep the street. So it's just what, whatever it is that you do, just be the best of what you do and give it your all. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much You're for that. Welcome. I want to ask you now, Judy. Those are the 13 questions I want to ask you. But we're going to go into the next segment of the show right now. And this is the segment of the show where you can tell the audience anything that you want to tell them. You have 13 minutes, so just tell them anything you want to tell them. And we can surround it by anything I want you to tell them. I want you to tell the audience more about your music. And I want you to touch base on your book. So tell me right now about those those two singles that you have. You have Jag Give Me Sweet Love and you have Freaky oh, yeah. Freaky. Yeah, Freaky Freaky, Freaky Freaky. Got this. <laughs> my daughter, my daughter was like, Mom, you know she did this on, she was, it was something about constipation. So then my son came in, G, and uh, he was like, you want to hear the track, Mom? Because men are listening to them kind of music then. So when he brought it in, I was like, oh, please, we can do something better than that. So um, I did. Freaky, freaky, and worry, worry, I walk around town. And I, but it's not right. It's the last thing I sight it, no good for walk. And I, if sad chips pump pony lipstick, the girl, them know what it is. Them, I, all right, we're done with that the one day. <laughs> So give me a next piece of the um the jaggy right. little love the next song. Ah, right, let me give. Well, Jaja, give me sweet love. Let me say each and every day. I me know Jaja loving won't lead me astray. Jaja is the truth. This loving is the way. I and I must reach Mount Zion one day. Eh eh. No. <laughs> so tell me some more now about the boat now. That is the okay. two songs right there that you have here coming are out there playing the right now. Tell me about the book. What the book is about? Yes. Well, the book is about um, just overcoming the adversities of sexual abuse. You know, as, as I said, you know, growing up, going to school and stuff, I was getting so much fights. I mean, it, it was just so horrible, you know, and you asked me a question, I, and, and I would like to take that back. You know, I wish I could go and undo all them people that I beat up for nothing. <laughs> I'm so sorry, y'all. I was it's just hurt. Y'all, y'all was just y'all, y'all was just um. You were a bully. They, they was just, what you're saying? Or you're saying no, you I wasn't a bully. No, no, no. I'm mean, a bully beater. I Men I like people. I stay to myself. Even in right. school. Even now as an adult, I stay right. to myself. So and, it's a beat of the bully. But, 
Yeah, I'm a bully beater. See, because I'm a Jamaican and I'm very light skinned and I have freckles in my face, I used to get teased all the time. So right. then when things started to happen, um, well, from in the house, I was whooping ass from in the, excuse my language, from in the house because it's like, I have to protect me. I have to defend me. I don't have no one protecting and defending me. You understand? Right. And this is my life. And I have a right to the life that, that was given to me. From the day my mother chose to carry me and God sustain me and I come on this earth by any means necessary, I have the right to live and to live my life to the fullest. Now these people that was in my life that did things to harm me, they're going to have to pay for that. But even though right. they're going to have to pay for it, I still had to pay for it because I had to go through it. You understand me? So in going through the feelings and the emotions and, and everything, I just come to this conclusion that I am not going to allow anybody to harm me. So I made sure I, I taught myself things, you know? And um, if you need a bodyguard, I'm here, Mr. Alex. <laughs> well, if I need a bodyguard, what you say? You need Your a bodyguard, bodyguard, get me, Mr. Alex. They ain't going to think right. about no woman. Like that, I, you know? I, but anyway. I hear it's a powerful statement by a late man that is no longer with us in the, the physical world by any means necessary. I hear your radicalism. I, I hear the forwardness. I love it. You have to be. You have to be, Mr. Alex, because I'm telling something, you know, what a man, what a next man eats, you understand me? Can't satisfy your hunger. Right. Can't. So, man, man just don't watch nobody face. You know, and in the same token as not watching nobody's face, me can't watch my face either. Because if my daddy will watch my face, nothing now got happen. So let me I, ask you a I, question. I, I gotta use my hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. as it relates to the book now, you have a timeline that you want to finish and, and um, put it out there to the public? Yeah, well, I, I wanted to finish it this summer, but I'm going to give myself some time because, mm -hmm. um, because um, I have endured so much horrific um, things and, you know, I've forgiven, I have forgiven my family, you know, um, most I've forgiven my father. As I said, I love my father. I'm, I just don't, um, wasn't in acceptance of the things that he's done. And I, I still believe that he should be brought to justice. You understand me for all of us that he has hurt. And it, it um, but whew, that's hard. So you're saying it's that really because the father is not Bill Cobbs, that's why the case may be the, the, the police yeah. force didn't do anything yeah. about it. Yeah, because he don't have no money. The, 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 state, the state want money. Everybody want money, you know. But um, some things is not about money. Like what he took from me, it wasn't money. He took a piece of my soul. You know, and, and he took a piece of me. I've been fighting to keep Well, he tried to take my soul. But God got that, you know, and he guarded my heart because I'm still able to love. Like I have 10 beautiful children and I love them with everything in me, you know, and I would do so just you, about anything it, for them. very touching, you know, because it's very touching. And it, the thing is, you now, backstage, you've been telling me a few things about your drugs, abuse and all these things. Oh, so yeah. Old. Oh, my God, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why am I going to take it down? the different type of hard drugs that you've been taking. All right. Um, take. Well, um, when I came from Jamaica and um, I was with Mr. Moody, um, he came at me one day wanting to have sex with me, this old man. So I ran out the house and I used to go to a store and it was a Jamaican store, but I never would talk. And that particular day, um, two gentlemen came in, um, Eva and Kush. And they were like, well, they're going to New York. And I said, well, may I go to New York too? And their eyes was wide. And they're like, well, look at Jamaican pick me all this time in the store. Oh, no. You know? So I tell right. them what was going on. And they took me to New York with them. And driving to New York with them, I was I was petrified. <laughs> oh my God, I was so scared. Like it was one, two, three, four big man and me, this little girl. Them time them are not so fluffy, you know? And and right. and, and my daddy 
I'm a scared and I'm a smoke ganja, I'm a high. <laughs> you know the back. And then I think these people could do anything to me and nobody would know, you know, but God protected me. And as I say, he always places angels around me. And even though these men did what they did, they protected me and they kept me safe. You know, um, I, I, um, I, um, I was running with the shower posse, you know, shower at 14. Posse. Yes. I mean, the Jamaican um, shower posse, they're t- they yeah. not talking yes. shower posse. They, yes. They live um, right. the shower posse. Yes, I'm really known as, as the, the JLP shower posse back in the day, so to speak. Well, yeah, I, I just know that if for me it wasn't a gang i didn't look at them as gang the these right. men they took care of me um not one of those men ever sexually touched me in any way you understand right. me um right. they 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 helped me with the valuing of myself you know right. and, and and they've given me um things to live by that I live by today, you know? So, so um, they, they, they rebuilt your stamina and your identity of, 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 of young lady and, and just yeah, being, yeah. You, you felt love amongst the short pass you're saying. Um, yeah, I felt love. Me. I felt love for a cushion ever, you know, for, for, for taking me in and um giving me an opportunity to grow yeah right i didn't um i didn't have to do um i didn't have to sell drugs but i just didn't want for the day to come and how did you get involved in the drugs how did you start taking it um i got involved with the drugs um i was with i was i met a man he was a police officer and um i fell in love with him and um i was going through a horrible situation with um my daughter's father and um you know having all the children that i do and you know somebody interested in you is like okay you feel good you know and everything and then it's like i keep having these feelings and then when i would say things to him he's like i'm crazy but anyway, long story short, me and the girl where did I sit, um, going job, and it's real. <laughs> yeah, tell me, say, me, me, my mad, right? Who is this? Mm-hmm. So we took his money and stuff and went shopping. <laughs> right. So, but so, um, so, my, drugs, my, so, drugs, so, my drugs, my drugs, my drugs, my drugs started from way back in the day. Um, from when I was cooking crack, you know, I'm cooking crack, cutting crack up, not using any gloves, it's going in my pores, you know, right. so I was, um, I was an addict without even knowing that I was an addict, you know, so right. um, when I went through the situation with this man and I gave up on myself, I started using drugs, nobody gave it to me. I gave up on myself because I said, you know what? Everybody always hurt me. Why not me just hurt me? F it. You know, but yeah. um, I can't F it because, like, I'm here for a purpose and a reason, you know. Yeah. And um, I, I don't know what it is, but I know that God did not allow me to go through the things that I've gone through to just sit down silently on it and not expose, you understand me? Not expose these demons that surround us. Like they go to church every Sunday, like everything is okay, you know? And it's How not okay. Get, Julie, How did they get over that? Because you told me that you went to that? rehab up here. You did all yeah, that. I went to, I went to rehab. Um, rehab didn't help me. Um, I, I got over that because that's not me. That's not who I am. You know, right. that was just that was just a a um a result uh, uh, of things that happened, you know. So 
and, and, and my sexual abuse is not me. It's just something that happened to me, you know, and me taking drugs, even though I took drugs because of all the things that I was going through, that was just a bandaid for all that, you know, right. but I'm here. I have 16 years clean. I haven't touched no crack. Be like, um, what a, what a boy and a wife name. Just say no. After them, I bring in the wall of the drugs, but just say no. It's not just say no. You know, it's just that you have to value yourself and you have to know that no matter what happens, right. uh, you have a voice and you are valid and God validates you every day that he gives you another day. And your life is special. And, it, and people may not look at you as you're special, but just know that you're special and your truth is your truth. And, and and can't nobody take that from you. And, you know, a lot of us go through so much painful stuff. Like I wrote the song Heavy Load, which is my um, my organization. In the beginning of the song, it says, the ruler of the Eden have power over them and their leaders have complete control, torturing, raping, mutilating our children, trying to conquer their souls. All around I look, I see a broken down chaotic society. All around I look, I hear the voices of our children crying out in vain. So mm. it's just um, children grow up. And um, when you look at society right now and rapes don't happen because women dress scantily. Um, live in Africa, they're not raping the woman, you know, that, that they're in cultural stuff and cultural attires. Rapes and stuff like that are, 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 are crimes of, of, of strength, you know, power. You know, somebody wants to have power over somebody. So it's the same thing with sexual abuse. It's power, it's who's in charge, you know? So we just have to raise our children and let our children know the good touch, the bad touch. And please don't tell your picnic say you're gonna kill nobody because your picnic no one, no one you go to prison. So you know those things we need not say to our children. Oh, they're gonna kill anybody who touch. Yeah, we need not say that. Well, we have you to, know, we but... have to cut it right here, Judith. Until the next time. Um, yeah. I want to thank you for coming on the program. I'm gonna to touch base um, briefly right now and talk to the audience um, about why did I start Earth World Trade? Why did I start Earth World Trade Academy? Why did I start Earth World Trade Entrepreneurs Talk Show? I'm your host, I'm Kevin Alex Bent. And this segment of the show, I just wanted to tell the public at large, why did I start Earth World Trade? Earth World Trade is a company where we manage things. We manage our own finance. That is the reason why I started Earth World Trade. Invest in many companies to take part into many things that I couldn't do working a nine to five because the system itself have created a capsule, a narrative of how you look at the society in the sense of the context of how you go to work and come home and you work for a paycheck. That is what they have been taught in me, um, teaching me. In school, that's what they been taught to me. That's what they teach me. That's what they showed me coming all the way up. And I was always one of those persons looking out and said, but wait, I'm not gonna get rich from having a 95 job. I can't live on this thing. So when I started and I went through the different aspects of banking, insurance, work with different companies, Guardian Life, Sajikor, Caribbean Assurance Brokers, um, as a brokerage house, you have the right um, to sell policies, for other companies here in Jamaica, did all of that. Went to the Jamaica Stock Exchange, did the securities and all these things, right? So get the accreditations, went through the door. Now I manage my own funds. I build my own investment portfolio. Now going through these um, corporate world and these corporate governance and structures and fraternities that is associated with these um, companies, that you understand that this thing in the society, which is life itself, it is being um, cultured, nurtured, monitored, everything. Everything that you think you know, you're living in a matrix. 
the order have you program. So it's all about program. So you got to deprogram yourself. So what I did was I learned the matrix. I learned the order. And the fact is my rightful place, I've taken it. As a man, as a king, as a human, I should. So I created Earth World Trade um, Academy by teaching persons what I already learned. My life stories, my journey, the education systems, the formalities and the principalities of the different order and create my own order within my own organizations and create structure and teach people about things that matters and what they want to learn. So I created an institution and then I teach things that I've learned. Then I move on to that. I went into um, the talk show business because I realized as well, there's a lot of humans there that is being programmed and don't want to be deprogrammed because the fact is the program is so conditioned in a deep state mindset that you don't even understand that you're being programmed from the day you were born that we issued a birth certificate. Then I want to understand that. I want persons to understand that if you have a story, I want to hear it and you can share it with others because there's millions of people across the world like myself, like others that have remarkable stories and reach a point in life where we can share things we can show you so you don't have to take that long road down there that has been designed for you so entrepreneurs talk show is where entrepreneurs a person an individual who is trying to do the impossible become possible that is what it is so a talk show is all about hearing your truth and i've created this awesome program and person's been loving it so far it is uncensored it is a program where you talk your mind. You tell the people and what is what. You talk up the things them. We're not affiliated with no religion, no government, no any entity. This is just what it is. Straightforward, to the point, uncensored. That is what it is. So I am your host, Kevin Alex Ben. This is the reason why I created these awesome companies to create a legacy for my future generations to remember me for when I'm not here on this physical earth anymore now yes, today yes. i want to thank you yes, for coming yes, on to the program i want to thank you for having me and i want to know that all these other young girls they're out there now and all these other women no matter if you're 50 years old now you can come tell say your father they touch you you can come on the program to say listen my father they have sex with me you know and this thing me over it now but me is a big woman now we can chat about it and look now me have 10 kids and thing be like Judith, come forward, share your story, right? It's, it's, that is what it is. And for somebody else. Yes, Judith, go ahead. Yeah, what, and, and sharing my story, right, right. is a, exactly to empower other people. Because, you know, you have some, so, so many men and women. Sexual abuse is not just with girls. It's with right. boys too. So when you right. see them look a boy all up on the corner and them are chichi man and them are all this stuff, you know, when I for watch it, when I have to be careful, I wonder, I it's the pastors in the churches. Gay, right? Chichi man yes, means Right. Yeah, gay. Yeah. It's the pastors in the churches, the, 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 the police officer, the doctor, the lawyer. Nobody is safe. Sexual abuse crosses all color lines, all demographs, all um, monetary, no matter if you're rich, poor, you know, it, 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 the, that, that demon, because it's a demon, you understand right. me? And that yes. demon, when that demon rise, we have to wipe them out. Right. You know, for real. Because I seriously believe once you molest, you're gonna molest again. And as as was proven to me with my situation, and I know people, you know, like they're trying to make laws where you could have sex with a four-year-old kid pick me. Hell no. Hell no. Right. I, have, I have a four-year-old granddaughter. Hmm? This is happening to the United States of America currently. Um, no, this is happening happening in Europe. But they're they're making laws. They, they, listen, look, these people know that these priests have been molesting people all these years and have that done anything other than put these pre priests in different um clergies. Shift that, them that around. Really but we're going to touch base on that if we should have you again. I would love to have you again on the show. 
Um, we reach a time now where we have to wrap up the show. Do you have any final comments or remarks that you would like to say to the public? Yes, I would just like to say, you know, um, Jai is the ruler of all things. And he give and he take. Just never give up on yourself, no matter what it is. It doesn't matter what your story is, where you come from. Just believe in yourself. Can't nobody eat to satisfy your hunger. You understand me? And, the, and, and you don't have to take the scraps from nobody's table. You can work and, and put in your, by the sweat of your own bro and do the things that is necessary for you and your family. You know, and ladies, right. just be mindful. You know, thank you so and, much. Thank, thank you, you for so having much. me. You're most thank welcome. You. This is your host, Kevin Alex Bent. Um, we're going to about to wrap up the show right now, but I want to thank everybody within the earth world trade communities um thank you for your support this has been an next exciting program of earth world trade entrepreneurs talk show where we introduce we highlight we showcase different entrepreneurs entrepreneurs that is out there in the public space right around the world earth world trade entrepreneurs talk show no matter where you are in the earth if you're doing great work reach out Tell me about your story. If I find that your story is useful, I will bring you on the, on, on the program so the world can hear your story. I want to thank you so much for joining the program tonight. And until next time, this is your host, um, along with Judith. We want to say thank you for watching. Until then, bye-bye. Good night. One love. Good night.